Take more. Take more. Take more. Take more. Take more. Yo. Aye. Who would've knew these two? My crew would've still been my juice school. I would've never had up and left if there wasn't a reason to. Northwest and west of the left. We was one for all and we all for running. Small dancing it all from young, but yeah, I never yeah. saw what's coming. I first met L's in primary until you have to be like Started looking at the second line and from them we were tied like Siamese TP come a little bit after from an next school in the west Still come back to Alpha House About you guys, man. I'm talking about yard. I'm yeah. talking about how I met. You like had a lockdown after lockdown party, right? It was like a street party. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I was, it yeah. looked crazy. It looked like, like 5,000 kids outside. And the crowd was going fucking crazy. I was like, yo, who the fuck is yard? And how comes I don't know about yard? <laughs> so I found yeah. Lenny. Hit up Lenny. Me and Lenny started connecting. And now they're out in London, fucking with the Nordies off team, so I respect that yard, Paris. <laughs> My nephew gave me white rum and lemonade. I'm the uncle to Knox. Today is a great day for Knox. So we are here to celebrate his success. for making it to number three in the UK charts. That's a great achievement. There is still a lot of work to be done. Because we don't want to end up in number three. We want to be number one. Do you understand? We want to be number one. Two packs on the side, someone told me why all the eyes on me. The finest level, my endeavors kind of high stakes. Pre that twice, in the work till the G back ties. Mom told me come home some days, but you say I never did go. Wait, you say I never did. I don't, I don't have any expectations, you know. I never do with, with my music because. Because I spent so long doing it, and I never ever like I, I I never get what I expect, so I just stopped expecting. But I knew that it was gonna it was gonna be big. I knew it would resonate with people. But I just didn't know what it would amount to in terms of numbers. But it's great. You get what I'm saying? I can't complain, you know. <laughs> that he has his family and friends that are part of his team. That says a lot about people. That says a lot about him, that you know he wants to not just level up himself, but level up the people around him. And I feel like the people around him help him level up as well. And I just love that. So yeah, I respect that a lot. I don't want to sound cliche, but he's real rap. And I love his content, content, content. I love um, his concept. I love this, I know it's going to sound really random, but I love the use of saxophones in his um, music. It's really, really beautiful, man. It's so beautiful. I think, I think I remember the first time we ever met up after you come back here, we mm. went to cinema. Does anyone remember that? Cinema. Jamal Edwards, aka uh, Smokey Bars, he ran a platform, one of the first platforms of his kind. Um, what well, that got to that the level that it was at, SPTV, Smokey Bars TV where he would just put on a lot of like underground talent. Majority of the people in our scene went through Jamal first, you know what I'm saying? Like almost everybody, to the extent where we only realized how much of an effect he had on the culture. I saw so many people like, ah, oh, my first video was SPTV. Like my first, this was SPTV, my first. And then I was like, oh shit, my first video was on SPTV. I didn't even realize it. And it's done like a hearse away. Hurt the haters, night crept perforated. So holy man, you think the flipping church have raised it. Ages with the rhymes, we were calmly waiting. Calm and patient, looking into the I don't forget when people um, 
believe in me when no one else is. When, because a lot of people, the way the industry is, and I understand it to an extent, because it's the music business, there's business involved. But a lot of people are very numbers, um, like they think about the numbers too much. And um, that takes away from the music aspect of it. When, I, when, when there are people who don't see the numbers and are just focused on the music and the talent and whatever, I always remember that and I always respect that. And Jamal was definitely one of those people who just saw things for what they were. You're talented, this is great music, or I see potential in you, or whatever it is, but he always gave people a chance to make something of themselves. And there's so many people who've made something of themselves through him, so that's the kind of person he was. This, all of this stuff wasn't here. All of this, this is, this is the effects of gentrification, guys. All of this wasn't here. Um, like I said, there was a park. My childhood park was right there. It's not there no more. It's like, I, I get two feelings from it, innit? It's nice because obviously it looks a bit nicer and more pleasant and whatnot. As you can see, there's kids playing over there and that. Like, it's nice, but at the same time, it's, it makes me sad because it's like, all of the blocks are being knocked down. The people that are gonna enjoy this niceness aren't the people who lived here all this time, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are getting shipped not shit, but moved to like Manchester, Birmingham, places where they don't even know people. And then richer people are getting moved in to appreciate the niceness of the area. But it's like, I feel like the people who have, have sat here and lived in the shitty place that this was deserve to reap the rewards of how nice it looks now. But obviously it's not like that. Floor, sixth floor, that's my floor. That girl that just came out was my next door neighbor when I used to live there. When I first came back from Nigeria and I came here, I had goosebumps. Like, I just felt weird. Aye, young boy at the top of the block with a white front door in the corner, subtle. Cool boy always in trouble. Why you think his bread jeans called him knuckles? Ten years old in beef, dad thinks streets taking over me. Mumsy praying for me, but there ain't enough beads on the rosary. Raised by the walls from young, but still in the jungle like Mowgli. Always up front when the oldest speaks, so we're never as dumb as one's supposed to be. Choosing a split by the lift, it be what it be and it is what it is. They say if I tried it, they wild and kicking my shit because it isn't for kids. Four floors on my thing with a lid. Obviously, these are my neighbours, you know what I'm saying? These were my neighbours when I was living here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The community. We grew up together, you know, yeah. from young, so we do miss them. And the sisters and their little brothers and sisters. We miss all of you lot, and mum and dad. <laughs> yeah, how was that as a kid? We're good boy. How about me? He was. He was to me, you weren't quiet, quiet, yeah. but you weren't loud. No, I wasn't. You know, he's very creative, so I think he spent most of his time doing that, to be honest. He wasn't the loud guy, he was the cool guy. Look what I mean about the gentrification. See how, like, over here, it doesn't even look right. You see these blocks here, and then you look over here, and you see the balconies, they have rooftop balconies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy. The people who have been living here all their lives now look out of the windows and they're seeing people living it. Glamorous, glamorous, you got what I'm saying? The new builds, these were literally, I think they finished building these maybe like a couple years ago, yeah. where this building has been here since like the 80s. The picture that I used for Alpha Place um, is a picture I found online from the 80s, from 1987, I think. Are related, so 
my father and his father are brothers. So it's my little cousin. 2013, I just come out of jail. I come out of jail 2013. And I come out of jail, I found out that I've, my son's, my oldest is five years old. And then I've got a three month year old child. And then at the time, and then now I've come out and music is the last thing in my head. Like the last thing I want to think about is music. My little brother, Mr. No T, No Days Off, like, comes to me and says to me like, yo, you need to listen to Ashley. Ashley's song, Knox's songs, is, is, like, he's, he's doing rap. And I was like, remember, I just come out of jail and the last thing I want to hear is about music. So, um, I'm not really interested at the time. So then I'm coming to my mum's house. My brother's still badgering me. My, remember, my brother's 16 and Knox is 17 at the time. And they're bad. This is my little kiss, my little cousin and my little brother telling me about music. It's, I'm not taking it <laughs> that seriously. <laughs> So I come to my house, my mum's house, and then there's the song playing in the background. I see my brother, like, I'm nodding, quite myself nodding my head. I'm like, who's this? Oh, it's Knox. I'm like, okay. So I put him in the studio with a friend of mine, God bless, um, a guy that used to manage him with me, um, the guy that we named our first um, EP after, Energy, and that's Nicholas Rodman. He passed away, God bless his dead, and he passed away, but I sent him to him, and he had him in the studio. Three months later, Nicholas comes to me and says to me, I don't want to charge you for studio no more. I just want to be involved. The kid's amazing. I want to be involved. I think he's, we've, we've, he's got something. I just want to help you develop him. So I'm like, okay, I think we've got something. We put him in the studio, left him there for 12 months, 18 months, a week, from 17 to about 18, 19. He's just working and putting out music. And that's when we heard songs like Breps at Tiffany's. That's when we had songs like Told You. That's when we had songs like um, 21 Candles. That's, uh, all of them songs come from that period of time. It's just him and Eddie. Yeah. They say they didn't buy, I know they did They all knock the hustle, man, I know they did Tryna take my style, yeah, I know they did Then there was Agatha, told the whole the Shakara Fam, this hmm hmm girl will get the pampana Were you bluffing? Thought that I was cuffing? From when I heard them songs, I just knew That's when I was finally convinced, like, yo you're the best in the world, I knew, and I'm just feeling like So the best way I can say I'm feeling right now is I'm feeling vindicated I'm feeling like I wasn't crazy what I was hearing wasn't madness, I was right. Not of our house, I guess. The, the building, like the, the community, the people. And to me, it really just represents my childhood. Like, that's where all of my memories, all of my friends, it's home. That's the first thing that comes to my mind, home. You know what I'm saying? Every time I come here, it just feels like home. Free man up in the four door bands while they're chilling with your mum at home. Can't you see London's burning? And you can't duck this smoke. Man, nobody serving. Man, nobody the pot and stove. Feel like I've been on the road most days with you, say I've never been home. I feel like it's been burning for so long that we're just used to the flames now. Like, I feel like we've gotten used to a lot of things that like, we shouldn't have gotten used to. Bringing awareness to things like this. Because to be fair, like there was multiple intentions that I had behind home, but one of the intentions was to to put a face to a lot of the like the the headlines that, that people see on the news. Like because I know from Middle England or people who aren't from areas like this, they see the picture the, the mugshots. Ah, oh, this person stabbed this person. You see two of the mugshots and like ah oh, these criminals are do you get what I'm saying? But what I wanted to do was show how these things happen. You never really think of it. You just think, oh, it's just mindless crime. But it's like, these are mess ups, the fuck ups, correct. Like, we could admit the fuck ups, but the fuck ups that came about um, through like real emotions and real things that happen, things, emotions that those people at home feel themselves. Do you get what I'm saying? Obviously, they're not in an environment that will like prompt them to do something like, what happened in home, but nonetheless, it's humanizing those people because yeah. I feel like sometimes they're seen as less than human. TSP. The day that they messed like the day that Tom met Jerry. Only out of his hole for the cheddar, whether he knows if the coast is steady. Ready, one eye on the road like Fetty. First encounter, Don was a U while under pursuit, he was only 11. Like getting me stole with his brethren, they asked him his name and he told him it's Kevin. Bright eyed copper, most likely his wife he divorced. No more than a fortnight on the force. Young lad undergrad had a light for the law. But he saw something about Kevin. He saw a cold look in his eye while booking his guy, like, why I ain't telling him? Like, what are you doing? I look, I'm not even going to say that. 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 I'm not even going to say that.
We're doing great. What's up? Celebration. It's a big celebration, man. Okay. Top three, man. My nigga Nux. Alpha House. Make sure you get that. Well, the fact that I'm even on the project is like... It's, a, it's an honour to be part of such a great thing and a big achievement like that. Cause it pains my window. Cause your man had to use them skills. Pops taught man how to ride that cycle. Mum told me to read that Bible. Then a the big man showed me the rifle. Life's just a cycle. Baby cries when the baby's born. I feel like the UK rap scene is just like a baby. We're just taking footsteps, but the more every year we just do bigger and better and better. Look how much people has been in like the top five charts alone this year. Do you know what I mean? From like your Digger D to your Search of C's or whoever. Like these are all people man knows. Like and like I can relate to. You. Like so it's it's more realistic now. It's not like just a like an American rapper or whatever in the charts. It's people that man actually know. So that's a beautiful thing. Remember there was a time where like. We couldn't even make the music we wanted to make because the police will shut it down or they'll take videos down or we have shows and they cancel them. Like even a couple of months ago I did a tour and they were trying to cancel my London show. They closed the one venue, we had to go to another venue. But we still make it happen bro, we just fight and then they hate your music. But even if you look at the charts or even like the adverts or even look at the kids phone what they're listening to, it's true. That everyone loves the music. So they try to fight it down. But if it's like rock music or whatever, they don't, they don't care, they let them do their thing. But you could go to a rock rave today and they're beating each other up all night. But it's the drill they want to fight down, you get me? So it's like, come on man. When you tell us we can't do something, we're going to rebel. And, we're gonna, and there's so much other people that, that have no voice. We're the voice of these people. Nuts is the voice of people that are under the system, can't get out, have a shit life, miserable, depressed. But he makes them have hope. He gives them hope. Like, look at the kids that's come here today. Little kids, teenagers even, just to get a signed CD of Knox. Like, come on, man. I, young boy with the top of the block, with the white front door in the corner, subtle. Cool boy, always in trouble. Why you think his bread James called him Knuckles? Ten years old in beef, dad thinks street's taking over me. Don't get me wrong, obviously, like I said, I'm into film, so there's quite a few films that came out that gave me that feeling before Top Boy came out. But when Top Boy came out, it did feel good because even though those films are out, that was the first time, like, on Netflix. At, that, at the time Top Boy came out, Netflix was, the, was like, a, the new big thing, innit? Mm -hmm. So to see, like, people like me on Netflix, it was crazy, I can't lie, it was, it was, it was sick. Because if the, the only people that you see on the big screen, on the silver screen or whatever, are people from places that you're not from, like from America and this and that and that, it just doesn't seem like you can, it don't seem attainable, it don't seem like you can grab it. Yeah. But like, if you're watching Netflix and then you might even see your block or where you grew up, like, I swear, I swear, <laughs> then it's like, you get know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can be there, you could have just been walking down the street one day and just seen it. But it's like, yeah, man, it's it's good. It's good to see um, to see that kind of stuff. It, it does have a good effect, a positive effect. One of the big factors is Drake, for one. It was when he started um, collaborating with a lot of UK artists. When he released, um, was it More Life? Was it More Life? More Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he released More Life, he had a song with Gigs. Georgia Smith was on there, all of these people. Nike sweatsuit, Nike sweatsuit, DG. It might get beaky, ring, ring, call up, GG, do them up neatly. Bringing that dirty, dirty, bringing that 30. You need me to get that sh together so we can get together. Why? Four in the clears and one in the heady. Hand no shake, man, hold that steady. You man love pose with a tape for the picture. One of the main things I feel like was the language barrier. Because I feel Americans kind of do kind of relate to us, but they don't because of the language barrier, and they they, they find how we talk a bit gimmicky or whatever. Like, and I understand it because to be fair, people from London used to think that way about people from up north, like Manchester and Birmingham, and we couldn't take them serious because the accents were a bit different to ours. So I understand um, how Americans felt that way, but. I just think someone like Drake putting us on the forefront so much, it just got them used to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They got them used to how we talk. 
where now the language barrier isn't a thing and they see past it. The beauty of it is, is our tenacity. We, we, we're used to living in pressure. So we'll, if, they're locked, they, if top us, they stop us one way, we are gonna find, we're going to find another way to get the result that we need to get. So, so I ain't going to lie like it's everything straight, but it's better. It's a lot better than it was back in the day, but there's still a lot of work to be done, you know what I'm saying? And that's with all aspects. That's with police, that's with government, that's with corporate companies, that's with rec record labels, but everyone's moving in the right direction, slowly but surely, you know what I'm saying? He's my cousin and I love him and I just want to try and protect him from this industry and the people this industry, but I couldn't deny natural untalent. The kid is talented he, and he's brave. He, he, he approaches music from a brave perspective. Coming up how we come up in London and talking about the things that happen in London, whether that's knife crime, drugs, road life, whatever you want to call it, and like, he humanises it. He tells it in a way that, that other, other people can see that you see people and you don't see caricatures. Mm. Seeing a caricature is very dangerous. Like you, you, yeah. you base life on Grand Theft Auto, it's disposable. But that's yeah, someone's right. life. That's someone's. And he's found a way to paint this picture and humanise this experience. And I feel like the world, the country, and the world are just clocking into it now. So this is just the beginning, man. And I'm just glad Yard's here to capture it. <laughs>